Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here to talk about Oxford Biomedica and our work in gene and cell therapy. Um, I'd like to thank the organisers for inviting us to present, and also I'd like to uh, join Helen in thanking the panel for such a great start today to explain exactly what we're all trying to achieve. We are a listed company, so I'll be making forward-looking statements which cannot be relied upon. So, an overview for the company here. Um, OXB is a unique gene and cell therapy company. Our basis of our core technology is our lentiviral vector platform, our IP and our gene delivery system. Our revenue model falls into two, sorry, three parts. And, uh, screen's a bit small for me, so I need my glasses here, I'm sorry. Gene delivery system there. So um, we get our revenues from our licensed revenues from IP and products, revenues from manufacturing as well as process development, and also from development of our own portfolio, our gene and cell therapy products, which we are developing ourselves, and we either license out or continue to develop in-house at various points. So validation of what we do is so, so important. Our IP has been validated recently by Novartis and prior to that by GSK. We have product licenses with um, Sanofi Aventis for StarGen and Ustat. And we have deals with process development for Novartis there and immune design also. Um, the big thing about the recent deal with Novartis in October was that we now are in a place where we can plan to be cash flow generative by the end of 2016 on a monthly or quarterly basis. And thinking about that going forward, that means into 17 we can be cash generative. And that is based upon the revenues and the money we get in from a collaboration with Novartis. And I'll cover that in some detail as we go forward. So the business model is flushed out a little bit. The portfolio to the left-hand side, R&D, OXB Solutions, where we have lentiviral vector manufacturing contracts and process development contracts there as well. And the IP. The IP is very important to us. Key IP there, we believe that people wanting to commercialise the lentiviral vector platform with their products have to come to us for a licence. That leads us to revenues of various types of milestones, of royalties, manufacturing and process development, and also license fees. However, what's been great for us for the last year as well has been government income. They've given us two Innovate UK grants there for OXB 102 and Oncostat, and also we've had the AMSCI grant, the Advanced Manufacturing Supply Chain Initiative, £7.1 million, and that's allowed us to increase our capacity, bring in fill and finish, and generally increased our yields as well. And that's been so, so important to us, and that was very important in our discussions with Novartis earlier this year. <coughs> so gene and cell therapy, just to give a bit of a feel for what we do. Once only injections in vivo and ex vivo, I won't try and explain that here. Um, I think uh, Oz did a fantastic job from Novartis' point of view for CTL19, saying how it works. What I will say later on is how we fit, in, fit into that eco chain. To the left-hand side, though, thinking about the in vivos, post having just a couple of examples here. We have three genes we inject into this striatum in the brain. We stereotactic frame where we drill the skull here. And what we've seen so far on our phase one trial with that was a 30% average improvement in motor function. That's quite spectacular for a Parkinson's patient. For a tinnostat, we inject um, two genes into the back of the eye, the subretinal injection, endostatin and angiostatin. And we've seen so far dose-related sustained expression for that drug. And we close out that phase one trial in the first half of next year. So here's a bit of an overview of where we see the market and what's going on in gene and cell therapy. AAV and Lenti, ex vivo and in vivo. And we have deals now, two of them in the in vivo world with um, Sanofi and Immune Design, but also we have uh, ex vivo deals with GSK and with Novartis. Moving to the right hand side there, you can see the in vivo valuations and the ex vivo valuations. Slightly um, flexed there by the transatlantic divided valuations by companies. However, thinking about that, now we're working in in vivo and ex vivo, we think we have some significant share price upside to come. So on to our Novartis contract. Now this has been a long time in the making, this contract we did back in October this year. We've been talking to Novartis for a very long time prior to May 2013, and that deal was done and that allowed us then to prove our capabilities to Novartis. They had a non-GMP process. We took it to be GMP. We worked with them to make that better. And I cannot under understate the amount of work to pass their QA and QC tests within the business. All of that we did with flying colours, and we're now making GMP batches for Novartis. Novartis have a non-exclusive licence to XB's um, lentiviral vector IP platform for oncology. And any advising IP under the collaboration is owned by OXB, but it's an exclusive licence um, to <coughs> Novartis for IP relating to CAR T-cell products. The first contract is for three years for CTL19. We can expand to be longer and also into other products. And quite importantly, the financial terms are so important to where we're going as a business. We had the equity investment of $4.3 million. 
The IP license gave us not fund to non-refundable of $9.7 million. And we have undisclosed, undisclosed royalties on CTL19 and other CAR T products. And that's very important to our longer term future and fits in with our manufacturing, manufacturing alliance approach where we have IP, manufacturing and process development all put together. Looking at manufacturing and process development, we have milestones to come, we have uh, process development monies and we have um, also manufacturing, manufacturing batches to come to us. So over three years we are planning to receive around $76 million coming, coming forward. So that's a big number to a company like OXB. That's excluding the royalties. So here we are. Um, I would not try and explain this as well as Oz did because it is his product, but I will say we fit into, the, fit into the echo chain. We make vector encoding car targeting CD19. Then the vector transduces with enlarged T cells from the patient's blood. It's transduced, uh, sorry, infused back into the patient's body, and then because the hunter cells go after the cancerous cells and kill them. Um, we are very proud to be involved in this business with Novartis and meeting this unmet medical need. So a bit about CTL19, um, it has breakthrough uh, designation with the FDA, it will get fast approval when it gets to the right point, it will be a rolling review as well, and I think um, this acute uh, lymphoblastic leukaemia is a fantastic indication to start with, it will probably end up with CL and DCL, BCL as well in the end. A very interesting piece of um, uh, publication in the New England Journal of Medicine back in October. <laughs> talking about 90% of patients having remission for two years, and that's a really important point for these suffering patients. Pick your sales potential. We haven't gone to Novartis for this. We've gone to the internet to look at what can be available here to these guys. Um, Andrew Baum of um, City, City Group talks about $10 million per annum. Um, even a Novartis advert in LinkedIn, um, Therapeutics Global Launch Leader, will exceed multi-billion dollars. Again, expectations are high here. And again, uh, from Bloomberg, if it gets beyond leukaemia, it can be more than $10 billion. So again, if I put in perspective, a small royalty on numbers this size can be very spectacular for a company like Oxford Biomedica. So our business model. We license our IP and our products. Novartis I've talked about, we have um, a deal with GSK for six rare orphan diseases, could launch in as early as 2017. Each of those um, could bring between 20, 10 to $50 million in revenue, and the terms there are undisclosed. We have a deal with Sanofi Aventis for two of our products, that's Stargen and Ustat. Again, for Stargast disease, it could be as much as 500 million peak sales, Usher syndrome 1B, probably 90 million, um, and we have undisclosed milestones and royalties there as well. And I have to say, over the years, I think Sanofi have been an excellent partner to work with. Onto our 5T4 tumor antigen, talking about Trovax, so, sorry, um, the anti-5T4 antibody. Here we have um, that launching in 2023. Um, undisclosed royalties there as well. Um, sales of around 300 million we expect. And a deal with um, Bavarian Nordic on our Prosvax technology. Um, that could launch in 2017 um, and bring turnover of about 60 million euros. So what's the secret of our manufacturing and process development business? What are we trying to do? The objective here is premium pricing with a long-term interest in customers' products and bringing in some royalties. I've spoken already about the Novartis contract, but I think of vital importance here to us is our Novartis revenues with our AMSCI government grants to allow us to expand and improve our manufacturing facilities. We'll bring in a lot more in 2015 and further capacity still in 2016. On our process development, we are looking at several projects, in fact, quite a few, CM3 um, suspension culture, packaging producer cell lines, and media development. And of course, we have discussions ongoing with other partners who want to join us within manufacturing alliances who need our IP for Lente Vector also. And our product portfolio, which is what we have in the business and hasn't, haven't partnered yet. We have Retinostat uh, for wet AMD. That study will close out in 2015. Uh, we have um, Lonkostat for called graph rejection with the Innovate UK grant, and we have Glycoma GT reading out very clean in 2016. We're very excited about our work in Parkinson's. We have uh, Pro 7, the Phase 1 2 completed. We're moving in now to uh, OXP 102. Again, another Innovate UK grant there. We're going to put it at, that into patients in 2016. And because of our wonderful platform with the lentiviral vector, we can look at other indications as well. We're currently evaluating other things in the eye, as well as other things in the body, other parts of the body as well. We'll start talking about this publicly probably in 2015 and 16. For Trovax, we have three phase twos ongoing, sponsored studies. They should read out 15 and 16 in mesothelioma, ovarian, and colorectal. And we also have now started work on a 5T4 car, which should have a pre completed by the end of 2016. Again, I've made a point about our revenues coming to the business, where we're going with this. The bar chart there is um, not to scale, but talks about um, and shows where the money comes from, manufacturing, 
royalties up like some milestones. Now, to put it in perspective there, analysts have been looking at this quite carefully. M plus one Singer have looked at this 15 million and 14, um, 18 million, 28 million over the three years. And effectively there, we can see that business driving forward and driving us to a place where we can be cash generative by the end of 16 and into 17. So our news flow, we have um, further IP deals we think coming through with manufacturing and process development deals. We think it's that data coming through, closing out that trial, preparing for phase two. Um, we have other new products coming through to talk about as and when we get them to the place where we rank them, corrected them, and further Trayvax data coming through. 16, we'll see the start of the clinical programs for OXB 102 and um, Onkostat, Stargen um, and Dushstat development milestones coming through, and also preclin results for Glaucoma GT and 5T4 CAR. <coughs> so in summary, we have a unique gene and cell therapy business with leading IP and position in the sector. We're well funded with significant income flows coming in the near future from manufacturing and process development, and we can be cash generative by the end of 16. Validation is so important. We have our Lentavail Vector IP position validated by GSK and Novartis, and we will get royalties for CTL19 and other CAR-T products. We have the two products with Sanofi Aventis in, in the development. We have three other gene therapy products in phase one development. Further other drugs coming through, and at this point in time, I think we have significant share price, share price upside potential. Thank you very much. <laughs>